So today I want to have a conversation about the role of imitation in art. So all this kind of came about because over the last few months, I feel like I've just been in a really discouraged place creatively. And I don't know if that's just because this is January, February in Michigan, and it's cold and it's dark and it's dreary and we haven't seen the sun in a long time. Or maybe it's because work for me, just kind of in this season of life right now, in the winter in Michigan, in the wedding space, is just really tapered off and I don't have a lot of jobs. Or maybe it's just because stuff in my personal life and with my family has just been kind of punching me in the gut lately and it's been a really hard past couple of months. Or maybe it's just a combination of all those things. But regardless, I feel like the last couple of months have been a really discouraging place for me creatively. And so I did what I'm sure a lot of you do when you're in kind of a discouraged place creatively is I got on Instagram and started looking at everyone else's beautiful work, which then got me even more discouraged. But I started just kind of browsing my For You page and started looking at different content that was being suggested to me and really kind of went down this rabbit hole of these like eclectic, moody studio portraits that just kept getting recommended to me. If you know my work at all, I shoot mostly outside in natural light. I shoot a lot of weddings and couples and those kind of things. And so I just don't spend a lot of time in the studio. I don't spend a lot of time just kind of shooting models and shooting in eclectic lighting or anything. Usually it's couples, it's outside in nature, in natural lighting. And so for whatever reason, these kind of eclectic moody portraits really started kind of capturing my attention. And the further down the rabbit hole I got, the more I actually started analyzing and evaluating these images. So I started like actually like zooming in and seeing like how the light was hitting the subject in certain areas, what the background lighting looked like, what foreground elements they were using, what was actually happening creatively in these scenes. And that got me thinking, why not just try to do it? I reached out to a few friends and said, hey, do you wanna come over, hang out, and we'll try to make these photos happen. I ordered a few things on Amazon to kind of flesh out some of those accessories and pieces that I wanted to include in the photos. Things like a disco ball and a clear shower curtain that I could spray with water, a projector that I could use to project some fun imagery on the subject. Then I cleared out a space in my storage room, set up a black backdrop, set up some lights, and we hung out for a few hours making all of these portraits happen. And I gotta say, it was a really, really fun experience. It was something that was completely different than what I typically shoot. Even though I was technically using the cameras that I use for all of my paid jobs, I was creating something just for the fun of it, just to literally make something. And I was creating based on inspiration that I had found on social media. And they got me thinking about the role of imitation in art, because I've been a pretty big proponent of saying, hey, you don't want to imitate other creators. You want you don't want to just copy poses. You don't want to just copy lighting. Copying someone else is not really a way to develop a unique style. However, I feel like it's so easy to go down that rabbit hole and not remember and not kind of keep in the back of your mind that imitation is how we learn. If you see literally sitting behind me is a keyboard and I started taking piano lessons when I was three and a half years old. I was playing the piano when I was three. I took lessons for like 16 years, like classical music theory. And music has just been a huge, huge part of my life. But the way that I got good at music, the way that I got good at playing the piano, at playing instruments, at understanding music theory was by sitting down and literally imitating what was written on the paper. I would read the sheet music and play the specific notes on the piano. And then as I got better and better at doing that, then I started kind of developing my own style. I started to ad lib a little bit more. I started to inject some of my own personality into the music that I was playing. And now I can just kind of sit down and just create whatever I want to create. And it sounds like something that's just coming from me naturally. But it all started with imitation. Now, if we apply this to the studio shoot, I probably would never have just gone downstairs and started randomly setting up a shower curtain and a disco ball and a projector and some random colored lights and all that just for the heck of it. But because I saw these images on Instagram, because I got curious and I wanted to try to create that myself, because I asked myself the question, okay, how hard could it be to do that? And what would it actually take to learn how to do that? That desire to imitate actually caused me to want to develop those creative skills for myself. And the process of imitation was really, really interesting for me because even though I was absolutely looking at an image on Instagram, like pulling up an image, looking in, trying to figure out like how the lighting was set up, that imitation very, very quickly turned to emulation because I knew that I wasn't going to be in the exact same studio. I wasn't shooting in the exact same place with the exact same subject and the same lights and all that. I had to kind of take the work that I was seeing have a desire to imitate it and then turn that imitation into a desire to emulate and basically bring my own creativity, bring my own process, bring my own location and my own limitations and my own camera gear and all that kind of stuff into that process and then be able to create art that looked like the stuff that I saw on social media, but still had a distinct flair of my own. 
And I think that's what I was missing in my understanding of imitation in art. If I'm a creator who only ever imitates other artists, I'm never gonna develop my own style. But if I'm a creator who never is willing to evaluate and try to imitate and emulate other artists, I'm never gonna get better. It reminds me of a book that I read a long time ago called Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. And in that book, he talks literally about the creative process being the process of stealing. Stealing ideas, stealing concepts, stealing ways of doing things. But then the idea of the entire book is that as you steal those ideas, your creative style becomes the conglomeration of all the different ideas and concepts you've stolen that becomes your distinct artistic work and so i think in seasons where you're just feeling creatively discouraged in seasons where you're feeling like you're not being original get out there and try to imitate somebody else find a movie that you want to try to imitate some shots find some photos on social media that you want to try to copy and then basically figure out what it took to actually make that image happen and in that process you'll realize very quickly that imitation isn't actually possible but that desire and that drive to imitate will help you open up your creative mind to a bunch of different possibilities and ideas that you might not have explored otherwise. And in so doing, you will be able to expand your creative arsenal, expand your own creative style, and add new elements of creativity to a style that you might not have developed otherwise. Looking at someone else's work and trying to figure out how they did it, evaluating it, almost treating it like the sheet music as you're learning how to play the piano and just kind of going, all right, so they used these kind of lights and this kind of a setup and these kind of color tones, this kind of focal length on a camera or this kind of gear. How do they make that kind of thing happen? Will allow you to start exercising creative muscles that you might not have exercised otherwise. And in so doing, expand your own creative arsenal and your own creative style because then you'll start implementing those ideas into your own creative work and your work will not be imitation or even emulation, but original. So all that being said, that's been kind of my journey with the idea and the concept of imitation in art over the last couple of months. I'd love to know what you think about this down in the comments. Let me know, are you in a season where you're creatively discouraged? Have there been projects in the past where you really tried to imitate someone else and that's turned into kind of this creative exploration for you? Let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Peace.